It is the 23rd of the 1st, 2012, and this is today's climate change update. I want to begin tonight by uh, stressing community. I'm going to put a couple of uh, outstanding videos I watched today. One was by the Barbarian Rebellion, and the other one by uh, Goat Hollow. And uh, look for those links below. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely all about that. We're going to start on SOT.net Radioactive Waste Crisis. A mountain almost 70 years high. Before the month of January is out, the U.S. Department of Energy Blue Ribbon Commission on America's Nuclear Future will unveil the results of its two-year-long investigation into what to do with the accumulated radioactive waste at the country's nuclear power plants. By the year's end, that waste will constitute a mountain 70 years high. With the first cupful generated on December 2, 1942, at the Fermi Lab, not far from Chicago, when scientists first created a self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction. This waste is still around. Remember, 4 billion years some of this stuff takes to decompose. That's half-life. There remains no viable solution for either management or certain, certainty the disposal of nuclear waste. <clears throat> Yet the one recommendation that will not be contained on the DOE report is to stop making any more of it. While a child would never be allowed to continue piling up toys in his or her room indefinitely, falling in to tidy up the mess uh, failing to tidy up the mess, the nuclear industry continues to be permitted to manufacture some of the most toxic debris without, without a cleanup plan. A sneak peek last July at the Commission's draft report confirms that no new miracles are to be unveiled this month. Big surprise. Its preferred solution appears to be centralized in-term storage, allegedly temporarily but potentially permanent parking lot dump site for highly radioactive waste that, based on past practices, will likely be targeted for an Indian reservation or a, pure, or a poor community of color. The insanity, the insanity. Tornadoes possible in southern United States as snow threatens. Severe storms were expected to spread across several southeastern United States on Sunday into Monday with tornadoes, high winds, and large hail possible, weather forecaster said. <clears throat> A second storm fr front is expected to hit California late Sunday night, will bring significant snowfall to the mountain regions, according to the National Weather Service, before rolling into the southern United States again later in the week. The potential for severe storms stretch from the Gulf of Mexico in Mississippi to southern Indiana and Ohio. And we got another 6.0 earthquake. This one's the South Sandwich Islands regions. Uh, that's down by the Antarctica. Um, again, another big quake from down there. And uh, just think, 6.0s are just about every day, aren't they? Uh, they've got a story sinkhole near the village in uh, Russia. Scientists are trying to find out what caused this giant sinkhole. Uh, they've got a video attached to this story if you click on read more. A pretty dramatic hole. Uh, they're saying it's over a year old, but some guy threw his wife in there and they had to go down and rescue her. That's what's brought it up to the surface kind of thing. Uh, over to the watchers. CME, CME impacts strongly, compresses earth magnetic field, and produces auroras. A coronal mass ejection hit Earth's magnetic field and produced a geomatic storm, um, a G1 level, which is a currently still in progress. <clears throat> Where do I want to get to? Uh, the sea impact strongly compressed the Earth's magnetic field and briefly exposed satellites in geosynchronous, geosynchronous orbit to solar winds with plasma. Uh, shifting lines of magnetic force inducing strong ground currents in Norway and sparked bright auroras over the the, the North um, North America. And uh, of course a geomagnetic storm in progress. Uh, Ice Age now has got a story I wanted to cover. Midsummer snow in New Zealand. Uh, one of the readers says if this is midsummer we're, we're wondering what the real winter is going has in store here. 
Uh, this is the second time in two weeks snow is falling in South Island in midsummer. This time down to 900 meters. Last week it was down to 700 meters. And the New Zealand Herald describes the current weather conditions completely winter-like. And again they go into if uh, this is what summer's like, what's winter going to be like kind of thing. Over to the RSOE. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, we've got a landslide in uh, Bellevue, Washington, uh, heat wave in Western Australia, the Perth region continues, they've been having those crazy storms, a snowstorm in China, enough to come up on the board, flooding in the state of Oregon, the Salem region, uh, we've got a ship that sank in the Gulf of Hormuz, uh, uh, passenger ship in Iran and apparently it left in bad weather uh, from an island back to, to the mainland and uh, it ran out of fuel and sank in bad weather. They said what they did was illegal. They weren't supposed to go out. The, the weather was that bad. Uh, flash flooding in Fiji. Snowstorms in Utah. Flash floods in Singapore. Um, Hailstorms in Oakland, California. Flooding in South Africa continues, uh, the extreme weather in Mozambique, and that's that uh, tropical storm that's still going on. And that's about all new they have tonight. Now over to the nuclear stuff, uh, E&E &E News. A Boeing Boeing journalist reports being threatened in Japan by official at gunpoint. He was ordered to sign a falsified confession. It implies that this is related to his coverage of Fukushima. And we got to remember, this is I think this is the same ongoing story, remember, where the guy was stopped and harassed. Uh, they were demanding bribes, and uh, they arrested him for a little while before they deported him. NHK, interne uh, internal radiation exposure damages DNA, plutonium, hot particles seen in cell. Avoid touching the death ash. Now, I watched this video, and, it's, and it has to do with the samples taken 60 years ago from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki survivors and uh, they're just going into detail about how plutonium is still affecting the cells, the cells uh, 60 years later and of course with its half-life uh, that should come as no surprise. TEPCO meeting. Did you want to kill someone again? Don't you get it? TEPCO, we just heard today that he committed suicide and we're really sorry to hear that. And uh, these are the um, their elites going at each other. Japan Times, radiation problem will continue for a very long time. Complete disclosure is needed. Nuclear issues have come home to roost. Praise for nuke-free conference in Yokohama. And uh, they're still talking about opening up plants. Oysters growing at double normal speed in North Japan. Rafts would have sunk from the weight of oysters. Uh, they're basically not bragging this up to radiation one little bit and uh, they're saying it's due to bacteria or something um, don't eat the seafood really just don't do it uh, the Calgary Sun no need to panic probably about Fukushima fallout that rained on Canada the government hasn't even released the data I think they're not even taking readings, or at least they're not reporting readings. Top government official Fukushima nuke report was so shocking we decided to treat it as it didn't exist. And uh, that's all I'm going to have for you tonight. Again, like I first started off, uh, Goat Hollow and um, <clears throat> the Barbarian Rebellion both put out outstanding videos today. And I know they're both on two sides of the fence and uh, everybody doesn't follow everybody, but it definitely has to do with community and the YouTube community and um, all the nonsense that's going on with that, I thought they both uh, represented really well. So please check out those videos if you want to take the time and uh, enjoy while you can, everybody. Thanks for your support.